What would the Alps be without marmots? Until relatively recently, these rodents were lowland Tyrolians. So how do these lively characters get by up on Austria's highest pass? In the heart of Austria lie the High Tauern Mountains. Their most prominent feature is the Grossglockner, Austria's highest mountain. Many do not survive the hard winters. They're easy pickings for the golden eagle. Driven by opportunity, the sovereign of the air switches from hunter to scavenger. The cold months are a time of plenty for this hunter, in contrast to its prey. Marmots do not even attempt to face the vagaries of the cold. They spend the winter well protected in their softly padded burrows deep underground. They reduce their circulation to a minimum and sleep through the winter, which does not mean that they sleep all the time. Every two to three weeks, they wake up for a short time. It's just too early to get up. The chamois does not know the luxury of hibernation. It rests as often as possible to save energy. But the chamois can't afford to take long breaks. Searching for food in the deep snow is very time consuming. The golden eagle carries away carcasses heavier than itself in portions, but even that ploy will not work if one's takeaway lunch is frozen to the ground. The great bird of prey will come back again and again. It can feed on a dead chamois for several days. The ptarmigans have to be very careful of the proverbial sharp eyes of the eagle. They may be perfectly camouflaged, but every movement can betray them. They too can't sit idly around, but spend many hours searching for meager offerings of leaves and shoots under the snow. As the days get longer, the marmots slowly wake up properly. But is this what spring looks like? They're not woken by any external stimuli, such as temperature or light, but by their internal clock. But the weather doesn't always use the same clock. Quick, back to bed. A few days later, and the world looks a little more inviting. To prevent misunderstandings, when a marmot wags its tail, it's saying, I am the dominant male in this neighborhood. The dominant couple are usually the parents. They live together with several years offspring. The male, in particular, will frequently patrol the boundaries of its territory. Be careful, though. That camouflage does not work on snow. But some family member is always alert, ready to warn. The boss is unperturbed and carries on marking his territory. Spring unfolds late in the mountains, 
but is an impressive sight when it does. At slightly lower altitudes, a herd of red deer is enjoying the succulent green. Their young antlers are still coated in velvety skin, and the strenuous rutting period is far away. The marmot offspring playfully practice their battle moves. This is how they develop the skills they will need sometime in the future. But getting too deeply involved in the game can be risky. The fox is on the prowl. The scent of the marmots is picked up by his highly sensitive nose. His only real chance is with the pups that have become separated from the group. The cunning fox will not get involved with adult marmots. After the beaver, they're the second largest rodents in Europe and defend their young extremely aggressively. The ptarmigans have now adopted their springtime colors. Depending on the weather, they may be quicker than the melting snow. The cock has already selected a good breeding ground. If the hen agrees, the two will soon mate. But it remains to be seen how long these birds that love the cold will be able to stay here. The famous Pasterza glacier in the Grossglockner group, the largest glacier in Austria, is shrinking by about 50 meters a year. The summers are also getting warmer in the Alps due to climate change. This will have repercussions for the animal kingdom. Marmots rarely venture below 800 meters. Lower than that, it's simply too hot for them. These typical tundra inhabitants are, like ptarmigans, a relic of the Ice Age. Only 10,000 years ago, when half of Europe was covered with ice, they were lowland Tyrolians. But as the Ice Age ended, they had no choice but to move up to the cooler heights. Today, they are the iconic symbol of the Alps. But the idea that marmots assign guards is just a myth. Rather, all the older family members constantly alternate between feeding and standing guard. Seated upright on raised outcrops, almost nothing escapes their sharp eyes. Around the Fuscherlacke, a restaurant on the Glockner Pass, Marmots are omnipresent. Guests are welcomed to the restaurant by a special, oversized member of the species. But that's not all by any means. Some of the real marmots regularly move into the basement of the restaurant for a good reason. Herbert Hasslinger, the owner, has a special relationship with them. 
It all started with an orphan he found, took home and nursed up. Since then, he has cared for several injured marmots and has released them again into the wild. An astonishing number of them keep coming back. In the Pinskau region, marmots are called mankai, so Mr. Hasslinger is known as the mankai man. He always has a treat ready for his friends. But that's not what was intended. Marmots will now also find plenty of food in the mountain meadows. The largest marmot populations in Austria live around the Großglockner. These rodents are pure vegetarians. At first glance, they don't seem choosy. However, studies have shown that they actually prefer plants that are rich in unsaturated fatty acids. The higher their concentration in the body, the longer the animals can slow down their metabolism in winter. And this helps them survive the cold period better. The younger generation still has to practice a little until they look as efficient as their parents at the table. Multiple whistles. Keep a watchful eye open. This might be dangerous. might be. If you don't hear another warning, carry on eating. Even the youngest already join in with the group. At the age of six weeks, they leave the litter and from then on feed mainly on plants. Wash your paws after eating. After eating, personal hygiene is one of the most important daily activities of marmots. Only those that keep their coat free of parasites will stay healthy, and only the healthy ones will survive the long winter. If some inaccessible parts need grooming, they're happy to help each other. Mutual grooming promotes family cohesion. The youngsters stay in the group for three to six years, an unusually long time. But in the mountains, the summers are short and physical development takes that much longer. Other animals have to face the rigors of adult life much earlier, whether they want to or not. A little lower down the slope, a weasel appears to be suffering from St. Vitus's dance. What is this all about? The answer is quite logical. It wants to entice its child out of the burrow. But Junior does not want to experience the big wide world. Time to break with Mum's hotel. Not yet. Yes, indeed. Finally, even the rather unwilling Junior gets the idea. 
and the marmots are also not terribly peaceable at the moment. The young males are looking for a scrap. These comical looking rodents can be very aggressive. The adolescents can get pretty rough in their mock fights. First you draw yourself up to be as big as you can. If that doesn't intimidate the adversary, move on to the next step. What looks like a couple practicing kissing is in fact a pair of young males that could, in a real fight, make some nasty bites. Among brothers, there's a tacit agreement not to bite too hard. If the other were a stranger, it would be different. The decisive factor for the outcome of a fight is often the standpoint. Literally, the one on the higher ground is at an advantage. The powerful shoulders they need to dig their burrows make marmots perfect wrestlers. These playful quarrels are extremely important for the marmot's development. If you can't defend your territory later, you're in trouble. As outcasts from the group, marmots are hardly able to survive. The quarrels usually only take place between subdominant animals. The parents are respected by everyone. All the males in a family are subordinate to the dominant male, usually the father and all the females are subordinate to the dominant female. Each of the sexes has its hierarchy. Alongside the marmot, the alpine ibex must be the animal most associated with the mountains. In the summer months, the female and male ibexes live in separate groups. As yet, there's no sense of competition among the males, and they're happy to pass the time peacefully. The marmots also get drowsy in the midday heat. They often lie flat on the ground, which is not to absorb warmth, but to dissipate heat through the cool earth. Sunbathing also serves to kill parasites by ultraviolet radiation. If it gets even hotter, they will have to seek out a shady spot or even go underground, because marmots are extremely sensitive to the heat. While the adult ibexes can relax and enjoy their siesta, the marmots have to be very wary because of this character. The golden eagle is their most dangerous enemy. In some regions, marmots make up 80% of their prey. Some of the sharp-eyed rodents have already noticed it. Their warning system is perfectly implemented. It's not only a question of listening, but also of responding quickly enough. He who hesitates is lost. It's mainly the inexperienced youngsters that fall prey to an eagle.
after a close escape, this pup needs to feel its mother's warmth. Marmots are very caring parents, and the older siblings will also cuddle the little ones. The fact that the older siblings leave home late has many advantages for the youngest. The larger the family, the better their chances of survival. When the Edelweiss blossoms, summer must be drawing to a close. The red deer have now developed full-scale antlers, which, unlike the horns of the ibexes, are not made of horn, but of bone. For the red deer, the summer season is also the rutting season, and the stags are often seen close to the hinds. But this stag is not roaring. This barking is a typical stag warning call. The deer are now drawn to the higher altitudes and the lush mountain meadows. They often climb well over a thousand meters to get there. The ptarmigan now also find food in abundance. As these birds are monogamous, the cock will stay near the hen all year round. Other cocks have no chance. Alpine ptarmigan have a highly differentiated summer plumage. No two birds look the same. Even young chamois are master climbers. No ridge is too narrow for them and no slope too steep. One key advantage of this extreme way of life is that from up here you have an excellent view and predators are hardly in a position to come up this far. Autumn often arrives overnight in the mountains. Some of the slopes have suddenly turned white by morning and the temperature has dropped by several degrees. The most strenuous time of the year now begins for the red deer. Almost unceasingly, the stags court the females and try at the same time to keep their rivals at a distance, an arduous process. It's now also time for the marmots to break out of their lethargic mode. The cold season is fast approaching, and the winter quarters have to be prepared. Tirelessly, they set about gathering dry grass. And the youngsters join in where they can, as best they can. A 
then they carry it off to their burrow. The dry grass is not to be used as food reserves, but as bedding. If one wants to spend months asleep, one needs a good soft bed and one that's warm. The marmot's sleeping quarters are up to seven meters below ground level, so they're very well insulated. Their efforts are born of necessity. The extreme cold in the high mountains is the marmot's worst enemy. Far more die during the winter than are killed by foxes or eagles. However, the greater the number that cuddle together, the better the chance of survival. This may even be the main reason why the youngsters stay in the community for so long. Extended families as protection against the cold, a smart survival strategy. And yet, none of the hard-working bed builders is aware that this very family is in real danger. The subterranean activities have attracted a male from outside the group who wants to muscle in. The territorial owner tries with all his strength to ward off the intruder. If the stranger were to win, that would mean death for this year's youngsters. The new master would kill them to get the female into mating mood. It's a matter of life and death. The loser is doomed to leave and try to survive the winter alone. His chances are almost zero. But the family is saved. Aggression is becoming noticeable among the ibexes as well. Unlike the red deer, they negotiate their hierarchies before rutting begins. Ibexes rarely die in combat. Their conflicts are more ritualistic, and they often assess the strength of their rivals in advance according to size and horns. By the start of the winter, these issues have been clarified, and the males can look forward to courtship activities that do not begin until January. For the Marmot family, it's now time to crawl into their cozy hay beds. father can look back on a successful summer. If all goes well, he and his lively extended family will be seen around the Grossglockner Pass again next year. But there's some time to wait till then. <laughs>